The defense team representing Vice Admiral Mark Norman wants access to emails and documents from the Prime Minister's office. Norman was suspended as the military's second in command two years ago. He's accused of leaking government secrets. Now CBC News has learned that the PMO has been hit with subpoenas. The CBC's Murray Brewster has more. The notes are being sought by the legal team defending Vice Admiral Mark Norman. The subpoenas were issued earlier this month. The court order for notes includes Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, his former Principal Secretary Gerald Butts, Chief of Staff Katie Telford, top bureaucrat Michael Wernick, and Zita Astrophis, Chief of Staff to the Defence Minister. Vice Admiral Norman's lawyer, Marie Hennan, told the court today she considers the notes a high priority in terms of the records the defence is seeking. She is preparing a motion to dismiss the case on the basis of alleged political interference. You'll recall a few weeks ago, Norman's lawyers alleged that the Privy Council Office, and by extension the Prime Minister's Office, were directing the Crown's case. And that's why these notes are seen as crucial. The Crown, in an extraordinary public statement 10 days ago, denied any political interference. At the pretrial hearing today, federal lawyers could not say when those notes from the PMO will be provided. The reason for these additional documents and the reason that they're being demanded is last month when Zita Astrophus testified, she could not recall the substance of conversations or if there were actually any conversations about the Norman case while she was serving as an official in the Prime Minister's office. Murray Brewster, CBC News, Ottawa. We're back with the Power Panel, Tina, Jen, Marty, and Marie. Marty, uh, that that familiar term, political interference, just came with up again. With the PMO. With the PMO, just came up again. With, how, like, how with like everybody that's involved with the snc Lavalley stuff. How, that's crazy. <laughs> Allegations, I should say. But how problematic, potentially, is uh, is this story, and, and it's another iteration today, but is this story for, for the government? Uh, the SNC Lavalin stuff is a single story in one newspaper that has exploded and uh, was a very, very good story and well worth doing. That said, uh, the story like this, this uh, a courtroom drama, if you will, uh, almost has more impact on electoral for fortunes of the Liberal government, if only because the, the wheels of justice move very slowly. Uh, it's going to go on and on, keep closer and closer to the election, and if more stuff like this keeps coming out and more allegations of uh, political inter interference on the part of the Privileged Council Office and the part of the uh, Prime Minister's Office, uh, sort of builds on the narrative that, already, that was set forth by the SNC-Lavalin thing. Tina, what do you think? I think absolutely. I mean, I, I think that uh, a, a case like this, uh, I mean, certainly evidence, if there is any, should be provided from the PMO's office. Um, it, it should be an open book, in fact. And in fact, they should be, you know, uh, not having to be subpoenaed, but certainly just going ahead and offering that uh, up front to deal with this issue. I think that, uh, you know, certainly it, it seems like there, this week in, in particular, there's a theme of political interference as we're seeing with the NC Lavalin and now this. So, I think that, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot more coming up in the near future in terms of the fate of this next Liberal government, and we'll see what happens during the election. Marie, it's allegations. It's allegations in the SNC, but mm -hmm. the, there's like that common theme of intervening when you shouldn't. And based on the way that the Liberals ran in 2015, which Jody Wilson-Raybould uh, highlighted, this idea of doing politics differently, mm -hmm. is even raising the prospect of it. And we don't know, I want to be clear, whether it's true or not, but even yeah. raising the prospect of that type of political interference damaging to their brand. Yeah, I, th I think absolutely for the reasons that you you mentioned. I think it doesn't look good, especially because they ran on being different from the previous government and doing things better. And now people might wonder if, if it is any different than what happened sometimes under the previous government. Um, but... I don't know how much this story so far resonates with people. I know that Murray has been following it very closely, but it, I, I don't think it's, you know, it's a, a national one, yeah. story. It's a bit complex to see who leaked what to when. I don't get it. It's not a, a, a super simple story to follow and to grasp in a 10-second clip. So far, I don't think people are paying much, more, much attention. However... If the trial does start as planned in August and, and undergoes throughout the campaign or the entire campaign, then I think no matter what, what, what the allegations are, um, it is definitely very bad for the Liberals. Just because, for one, no matter what is said in court, just because every day they might have to comment on it and it will just derail the messaging of the campaign every day. Jen, last word to you. 
Yeah, I, I agree with Marie. I actually don't think that this story has had a lot of impact on, on, on the public. I think you have to be pretty deep in the weeds of, of yeah. Ottawa politics to be following it. Um, I, you know, the average person <laughs> certainly isn't. Guilty as charged. Um, I, that's, which is fair. But that being said, I think that the SNC story has actually made people pay more attention to the Norman story because mm. what we're starting to see and what I think we will continue to see are more stories and allegations that show a real pattern of behavior. And that's showing, uh, showing a pattern of behavior of people from the prime minister's office and directly connected to him, sort of putting their fingers where they really don't belong and trying to control outcomes that they really shouldn't be trying to control. And that is very, very damaging. And I, you know, I think that that, that, that gave the, the whiff of that really gave the previous government um, a, a, a bad reputation. And I think that we're seeing the allegations that are coming forward about this government are frankly a lot worse than what the sort of allegations that we saw um, leveled against the Harper government. Yeah, the um, Duffy draw was pretty bad, but yeah. Worse than SNC? I oh, mean, again, we need, we need to have some drinks over beers to debate that for three or four hours because that'll just be fun. But, um, you know, I, yeah, pretty debatable. But, um, and also, I would also point out, you know, we're three and a half years into this government. We're not, we're not talking about a government that's now, you know, in its decade third old. mandate and mm -hmm. a decade old and, and gotten a little loose around the edges. We're, we're talking about a government that's only really been here for three and a half years and should should still be in its a bit of its um, idealism phase. And, and we're seeing a behavior that's a government that's behaving as anything but idealistic. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. The Thank word of the you. day. <laughs> the word of the day. Thanks to the power <laughs> panel. Thanks to Tina House, Jen Gerson, Marty Patrickwin, and Marie Vestal.